the sin of interracial marriage. There is no such thing as a sin of interracial marriage, people. All right, I'm going to do a video responding to Ed Fenninger's video attacking me over my position on interracial marriage. I'm going to go through some scriptures that prove that God condemns interracial marriage. And he's going to say in this part of the video that, oh, basically that the old laws should still be applied then. Are you saying the old laws should still be applied? Uh, no, I never said that the old laws... For example, he's basically putting words in my mouth, making me say that I'm saying that the laws of Moses should still be applied today. I'm not saying that, but that doesn't change the fact that God still condemns interracial marriage. For example, we're not putting sodomites to death, but does that mean that God doesn't condemn the filth of sodomy? No, it doesn't. Sodomy is still a filthy, disgusting, pedophilic uh, death style. So God still condemns and hates sodomy. And any normal person would be disgusted by sodomy. I mean, sodomy is a pedophilic death style. So it's like anyone should be anyone any person who's normal would be disgusted by sodomy. And studies have shown that sodomy is a gateway to pedophilia. Committing homosexuality is a gateway to pedophilia. I get a whole other video in itself, but I brought up in my video that the people that were behind the legalization of miscegenation in America actually openly said that this paved the way for the laws against sodomy, the anti-sodomy laws, basically repealing the anti-miscegenation laws actually paved the way for repealing the anti-sodomy laws and the laws against, you know, sodomite quote-unquote marriage. I mean, absolutely, it's a proven fact. They've openly admitted that. And Fenninger, you know, says, oh, he's copying Brian Dillinger. Uh, no, it's a fact. I'm just pointing that fact out. And again, miscegenation is just as sinful as the satanic pedophilic sin of sodomy. So, anyway, let's get right into this. Well, he claims that I'm brainwashed too. Good afternoon. And we, for this video, we're going to briefly look at uh, a young man's video, uh, Faithful Servants, who's clearly been brainwashed by the uh, Brian Dengler cult. Oh, the PBI cult. They teach the same nonsense. Uh, that intuition. It's kind of funny. I, I never ever openly said I support Peter Ruckman. So he's like, he's saying, oh, I've been brainwashed by the PBI cult. Um, I've never once said that I support Peter Ruckman. I mean, yeah, he's brought out some good stuff, but I will openly support the guy. So, again, just lumping me in with, because I support Brian Dillinger, that automatically makes me supportive of Peter Ruckman. Uh, there are many points of Peter Ruckman that I, I have an issue with on, him on. So, uh, but yeah, Peter Ruckman has brought out some good stuff, but I don't openly endorse the guy's ministry. I mean, give me a break. Official marriage and stuff. Even though Ruckman, in his footnote, they ignore the guy who's really the father of this nonsense. He says there's nothing the Bible uh, forbids for New Testament. Here's the thing Peter Ruckman's not the standard, the Bible's the standard. So if Peter Ruckman says something contrary to what the Bible says, you go with what the Bible says. See, with Fenninger, what he does is that if you're a supporter of Peter Ruckman, he basically makes Peter Ruckman your final standard. And if you, if you say something contrary to Peter Ruckman, you're wrong or something like that. No, Peter Ruckman is not standard. And again, I, I don't openly support Peter Ruckman's ministry. I, there are some points I take issue with him on, but yeah, he he did bring out some good stuff. I'll, I'll give him that. But again, Peter Ruckman's not standard. The Bible's the standard. Testament. Saints, believers, seem to marry, though he says not a good witness. But uh, this is double talk, and this is why we jump on these guys for double talk. Lying. Jump on us as in like make video after video after video against us. I mean, it's one thing to expose somebody, but to just make video after video against them, you know, it, it's it's obsessive. It, it just it's weird. This young man has been totally brainwashed. She's gonna cite, for instance, a thing from that uh, Brian Dengler's put out that because the misogynist laws, the misogynist, the, uh, the laws that forbid interracial marriage, uh, were taken away. That led to the uh, the, uh, the sodomy laws. Well, yeah, I mean, again, the people who were behind the repealing of the anti miscegenation laws openly said that this paved the way for repealing the anti sodomy laws and the laws against you know sodomite quote unquote marriage, advancing the pedophilic child molesting sodomite agenda. You know, anti sodomite laws being taken away. So this is this is this is their logic. See, those laws should be still up. They, they think that the laws should be still up to forbid people from interracial marriage. So do you think that sodomy should be legal? I mean, again, I'm not, I never said that the laws of Moses should still be Moses should still be applied, but is, is he implying that sodomy should be legal? Because he's saying, oh, 
why should there be laws against miscegenation? And, and he, I mean, I'm not saying he's saying this, but is he implying that there should be no laws against sodomy? Because, again, the people who are behind miscegenation, the legalization of miscegenation, openly said that this paved the way for the legalization of sodomy. So, let's get into some scripture, because again, you know, he'll say, oh, Peter Ruckman, again, Ruckman's not the standard. Brian Dellinger's not the standard, the Bible's the standard. Uh, Ezra chapter 10, verse 16. Because he says, oh, the Bible doesn't condemn intermarriage. Okay, verse 16. And the children of the captivity did so, and Ezra the priest, with certain chief of the of the uh, fathers, and of the house of their fathers, and all of them surround, or all of them, by their names were separated and sat down in the first day of the month to examine the matter. Verse 17. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of every of uh, the first month. Verse 18. And among the sons of the priests, they were found that had taken strange strange wives, namely the sons of Jeshua and the sons of Josabek and his brethren. Mes I can't say some of these names. I have a hard time. Again, I'm not good at reading stuff on computers. Uh, Messiah and El Elizir and Jerob and Gal and Gedalia. I think that's how you say it. Uh, in verse 19, and they gave their hands that they would not put away their wives, and being guilty, they offered a ram to, of the flock for their trespass. So you see right here, they're guilty of taking strange wives, wives of other kindreds. And you'll say, oh, it doesn't say that. Uh, what do strange wives mean? You know? And they had to offer a ram for their trespass. Um, God condemns interracial marriage, and so does the prophet Ezra and the prophet Nehemiah. Sorry. I apologize, I'm, I'm sick right now, I have a runny nose, so I do apologize if I'm sniffling, I, I am trying not to. Uh, Numbers chapter 25, verse number 1, And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. So you have the Israelites that are committing whoredom with another kindred, the daughters of Moab. Uh, it's called committing whoredom. God likens interracial marriage to whoredom. Uh, Ezra chap or Nehemiah chapter 9, Verse 1. Uh, now on the twenty and fourth day, this month of the children of Israel were assembled with the uh, fasting and with the sackcloth and earth upon them. Verse 2. And the sea of Israel separated themselves from all the strangers and stood and confessed their sins and iniquities of their fathers. Hmm. The strangers? Huh. Confess their sins? Huh. So they're confessing their sins. They're, you know, talking about separating themselves from strangers. Huh. Interesting. Could it be that maybe God does condemn miscegenation and intermarriage? And again, you know, I'm not saying the law of Moses still applies. I'm just saying that God still condemns it. You know, God still feels the same way about sodomy, even though he doesn't say oh, we should still have the laws of Moses. Uh, ne uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 1. And on that day they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people, and therein was found written that an Ammonite and a Moabite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. Hmm. The Ammonite and the Moabite, two different kindreds, should not come into the congregation of God, which was Israel. Verse two, because they met, or because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Balaam against them, that he should curse them. How bet our God turned a, the curse into a blessing? Again, God is condemning people of other kindreds coming into the congregation of God. So don't give me this thing that God doesn't condemn interracial marriage. He absolutely does. So Fenninger, you know. I mean, if you're just going to keep obsessively attacking me, you know, I mean, I'll come up with responses every once in a while, but to be honest, I have better things to do with my time. So, anyway, uh, God bless you. Goodbye.